Hi, my name is uh, Varida Lynn uh, Bermejo and I am the president of uh, Pamananang Guzmaminda. Hi, uh, I'm Sherling De Lopez. I am the artistic director of the group. Uh, Pomana was, uh, was uh, founded in 2005 uh, here in Montreal and um, so we've been around for eight, for almost eight years and uh, basically we're a group of, um, of uh, Filipinos um, that were mostly born here in, uh, here in Canada, uh, in Canada or Montreal and um, we, are, we have two mission statements. Uh, one is to promote, our Philippine, promote and share our Philippine culture with uh, within our own Filipino community as well as members of uh, outside of the community, and our second uh, mission statement is to um, is to teach leadership and um, teamwork and collaboration uh, with the younger generation of, uh, of Filipinos. So for um, this particular event, uh, what we'll be performing is called Sinkil. It is. Uh, it come, it, the dance actually originates from the southern end of the Philippines, where the majority of the population are Filipino Muslims. Um, the Muslim religion is actually the largest minority religion in the Philippines, the, the biggest religion being Christianity, Catholicism. Uh, the Sinkil is actually a royal Muslim dance. It's still studied and actually performed by Muslim princesses in the Philippines. It was popularized by the Maranao people. Um, I mean, the, the version that we have is very theatricalized. If we go back in history or go back to the actual authentic roots, uh, there is no actual dancing interaction between the male and the female dancers. Uh, we've had to stylize it. I mean, across the board, uh, theatricalized folk dance groups have had to theatricalize it. Um, and basically what it's depicting is a princess, her name is Gundingan. She is walking through the forest. Uh, presume the, the myth is that she's actually escaping um, an arranged marriage. So she's walking through the forest trying to run away. Uh, she has her lady in waiting, uh, holding an umbrella, which is a symbol of royalty. Um, and then all of a sudden, the fairies of the forest, the spirits of the forest, decide to play a trick on her and cause an earthquake. And so she must dance through uh, falling trees, which is enacted by the bamboo poles that are clapping together. Um, the spirits are being um, represented by the dancers with the fans. I'm sure that you will see it, so <laughs> it'll make sense then. Um, and then she is actually rescued by a prince by the name of Bantugan, who Catch, who sees her, falls in love with her, um, and essentially saves her, and they end up dancing together. And so the end result is they live happily ever after. So that is what we'll be presenting. It is one of Pomana's signature numbers. So hopefully uh, it's enjoyed by the audiences that get to see it. Well, the, the bamboo clapping, basically, it's to a set rhythm. We have music and, and essentially the, the bamboos, they bang on the floor and they close together. Uh, to a set rhythm, sometimes faster, sometimes slower. Um, so essentially, it's it's supposed to depict the earthquake. So, but really, what it's supposed to really show is how graceful the princess is. That she's able to step through these bamboos while manipulating these fans uh, without getting caught in the bamboos. So, um, the bamboo clapping serves a variety of different functions. As, as we said, it's supposed to enact the earthquake, it's supposed to show the grace, but also it's supposed to act as an instrument as well. So you would get the noise of the bamboos closing and you get this feeling that someone's going to get caught, but the whole point is that you don't. So it, it makes for a very dramatic performance because the buildup of that noise of the bamboos and then all of a sudden it, it stops. So uh, that's it <laughs> for that. Uh, what we hope to share uh, with this performance is essentially, as, as Varida mentioned, um, we, we have Filipino Canadian youth in our group. Uh, so what we hope to show to everybody is that even though everyone, about 90% of our membership is born here, um, we are still Filipino at heart. Um, that, you know, Filipino Canadian youth is still knowledgeable and that they there are children of immigrants who are still um, interested in learning about their parents culture while still maintaining their identity here in Canada um, 
we hope that um, the energy that we have and the love that we have for the performing arts and for the cultural arts inspires people, whether whether or not they're Filipino, whether whether they're from a different culture. We just really hope that we give people hope that you know um, the youth still care about stuff like this, and that you know we are still very passionate about things that are constructive and that are healthy um, that teach you things.